Okay, well welcome to this watercolour success step-by-step -step, uh, presentation. My name is Rod Moore and I'm the author of the uh, watercolour success blog and the web address for that is www.watercolorsuccess.com and in this presentation uh, we're going to be going through the steps I took to paint the picture that you see on your screen. Uh, now the watercolour success blog is really documenting my personal journey from starting out as a beginner um, in watercolour and learning how to uh, develop the techniques and move from that to becoming a professional full-time watercolour artist in uh, years to come. And so at the time of recording this I'm really still very much a beginner in, uh, in a watercolour painting. Um, but I thought it might be interesting just to show you the steps that I go through um, in, you know, putting together a, a painting like this and keeping in mind of course that I am a beginner and that I'm still in the learning phase um, and so there's probably things that I'm doing right and probably things I'm doing wrong and I'd welcome your feedback and your comments and suggestions on how we can improve um, but this is the process where it is at today at the time of this recording and uh, so let me just go through what I've done is taken a series of photos here for you and, and this is the starting point obviously is the drawing now this is done on a um, half sheet of Archer's 300 GSM rough and uh, spent a bit of time with the drawing and I still think you know I probably need to work on my perspective a little bit or, or quite a bit actually um, but getting better at it all the time and, and you know practice makes perfect the more you do it the more uh, yeah, the more skilled at it you become. Now this particular p painting here is uh, I guess my influences are people like Elvira Castanet, uh, John Yardley um, people like that who are very much into uh, placing figures in their paintings, very impressionistic I guess, so painting a fairly loose style and uh, that's the style that I'm influenced by and so this um, scene is really just you know like a piazza in Europe somewhere um, and the figures and the people have just been put in pretty much you know through my imagination so the first starting point obviously is to get the drawing down just the large shapes the outlines and so on um, and then from there we go to the first wash and um, so I'll just go through this a little bit I've used a very weak mix of uh, cobalt blue in the sky um, and brought that down into some of the distant buildings in the back here um, and then used a yellow ochre wash as the primary sort of underlying wash throughout these buildings a um, bit of burnt sienna into the roofs here and tried to preserve as much of the white space around the cafe umbrellas and the awnings and so on and, and on some of the tops of the people here um, always find that just a little bit tricky preserving the white spaces but nevertheless um, into the sort of foreground here I've dropped in some uh, burnt sienna just in you know wet in wet just to sort of give a bit of texture into here and a little bit into the you know the side of the buildings here as well and this building over on the left here uh, you know I dropped in some alizarin crimson um, and possibly even you know a little bit of ultramarine just to bring out a little bit of purple into the colors there um, and down this strip here which is going to be in shadow I've put in you know burnt sienna in there so that's the first wash um, left that to dry and then moved on to the second stage now, in the second stage, what I started to do was to um, to fill in the colours of these awnings. I originally were going to, you know, preserve the white space for the umbrellas um, and the awnings and so on, uh, but something told me to, to fill them in, so that's what I've done in the second stage there, um, around the cafes, all the different awnings, um, filled in a few more of the rooftops and put in some of the windows in the back there. Now, I have to say that with this painting, I, I felt like uh, it didn't quite work, you know, the overall result didn't quite work and at this stage I was starting to get that feeling that maybe the colour choice was wrong um, overall just wasn't really feeling uh, like it was working nevertheless I decided to continue with it obviously um, to just keep up the practice and to keep working away at it so the next step I started to put in the windows and some of the details and the buildings and uh, at this point I really felt like it wasn't working um, you know these colors were just too dark for the windows and you know proportionally it wasn't quite working although you know it still has that sort of loose impressionistic feel but at this point I was almost ready to give it away because I thought ah, this is just not going to work out at all um, the contrast between the wall colors and the windows and the arches and so on uh, I just thought it was too great um, and you know just wasn't going to be able to make it work but however um, because you know one of the things that I really love to do is to place people and figures into paintings I decided to continue 
and um, at least do the figures, you know, um, get a bit of practice in doing that. So you can see there I've dropped in some colours for the faces and hands on, on the people that are walking in this direction. And uh, moving to the next step, well, this is the last step, really. And um, look at the dramatic difference. Like, I decided to make all this foreground and right-hand side area in shadow. So to cast shadow from a building on the right-hand side here. And um, just look at the way the light has really changed. And, you know, a lot of the great teachers that I've studied have all said, you know, talked about the the uh, tonal values and the, the importance of having tonal contrast. And you don't really understand what they mean by that until you actually see it in this sort of light. So if I go back one, you can see these buildings, you know, there doesn't appear to really be uh, these buildings really to be working that well, um, especially with the contrast of these darker colours against the light buildings. But when the shadow goes in, the car shadow, um, these buildings sort of come alive a little bit, I feel. Um, and so the end result, you know, when I put the details in for the people um, and the shadows, you know, the shadows on the buildings here and down through here um, and underneath the, uh, the, the different cafe areas, um, I felt like the end result came together quite well, um, you know, reasonably well. It's not certainly not one of my best paintings, but it's, um, I think, a good demonstration of the different stages of a painting and, and how they impact and change the overall feel of the painting. Um, you know, the people I'm sort of, I guess, the study of being able to put people in and creating life and animation and energy into a painting. I think that's something that uh, will be ongoing. Um, you know, put the distant people as silhouettes and then given some more detail and colour to the people in the sort of centre of the picture, if you like. Um, but overall, I've, you know, I've, I was really pleased with the way it uh, came together with the shadows and the people put in. Um, I wouldn't say necessarily the painting's a great one, um, but it certainly is a good demonstration of what can happen with the different stages of painting. So if you'd like to find out more about um, about what we do, drop by the Watercolour Success blog, which is www.watercolorsuccess.com. You can subscribe to our uh, newsletter there, and um, you can get more lessons like this as we create them. And also, each month we give away one of my original watercolour paintings. So um, if you want to be in the running to win one of those, then please drop by. We'd love to see you at the Watercolour Success blog. Uh, my name's Rod Moore, and I look forward to bringing you more step-by-step -step watercolour painting demonstrations soon.